we move on to measurement of depreciation. What we've understood so far is that depreciation is a loss in the value of asset. It is a systematic allocation of the cost of the asset over the life of the asset so that the cost is matched with the benefits that the asset is put to it. Put to it. The benefits that we get from the asset. What is the systematic allocation of depreciation? How much should be the depreciation in the first year? How much in the second year? How much in the third year? So how is depreciation for each year measured? This is what we shall discuss when we discuss measuring depreciation. Actually, there are different methods of measuring depreciation. We will discuss the more important ones. But what are the factors which are required in order to measure depreciation? First and foremost, the cost of the asset. What is the cost of the asset? One is simply the purchase cost. Let us say we, I import furniture for my office. What are the costs involved? There is the purchase cost, the invoice price. There may be certain custom duties I have to pay. Then there is a transportation cost of bringing the furniture to my office. There may be an unloading cost. There may be a cost of fitting it. All these costs which are incurred till the asset can actually be used would go to add to the cost of the asset. This is actual. We can compute. And all costs incurred, all costs incurred till the asset can be put to use would be a part of the cost of the asset. Please note, maintenance costs, cost of maintaining an asset is not a part of the cost of the asset. Insurance premium paid, etc. Regular repairs, once a machinery has been installed, regular repairs in order to maintain the machine, maintain the condition of the machine, these are not a part of the cost of the asset. The other factor is what is called the residual value. The residual value is the value I expect to get by selling the machine after using it during its lifetime. It is in a way you can say the scrap value. For example, if I purchase a machinery with a life of 5 years, the machine is purchased for 1 lakh of rupees. At the end of 5 years, I might be able to get some 5,000 rupees for it if I sell it as scrap. This 5,000, this scrap value is the residual value, the value at the end of the life of the asset, end of the economic life of the asset. This scrap value may be estimated. I am not sure that I will get 5,000 rupees exactly for this. It is quite possible that I get only 3,000. It is also possible that after 5 years, I might get 8,000 when I sell the asset. Therefore, this residual value is estimated. It is only an estimate. Next is the useful life. I expect this machine to run for 5 years. But it is possible that it runs for only four and a half years. It is quite possible that it runs for seven years. So the life, the useful life of the asset is also an estimate I make based on my experience, my judgment, my understanding. So these three factors actually contribute for measuring depreciation. I need to know the cost of the asset. I need to know what I expect the scrap value or the residual value to be and I should know the useful life of the asset, what the expected useful life of the asset is. Considering all these three, I arrive at what is called a depreciable amount. Depreciable amount is nothing but cost of asset minus the residual value. This is my depreciable amount. It is computed from these three, from these two factors above. 
And what is depreciation? This depreciable amount, cost of asset minus residual value spread over the life of the asset will give me depreciation for each year. How it is to be spread? Should it be spread equally because I will get benefit, equal benefit each year? Should it be spread in such a manner that I get maximum benefit after all from the asset in the first year and therefore maximum depreciation should go in the first year? Or should it be entirely on the basis of the use? I use more, therefore more depreciation. I use less, I therefore less depreciation. So there are different methods of computing depreciation, of measuring depreciation. First, let us just understand the cost of an asset through this exercise. <clears throat> Following data pertaining to B limited is available. Cost of the second hand plant is 180,000. Cost of repairing the plant is 20,000. Wages paid for installation of the plant is 5,000. Five ins fire insurance premium paid for the plant is 1,000. What is the amount to be debited to the plant account? Is it A, 180,000, B, 2 lakhs, C, 2 lakh 5,000 or D, 2 lakh 6,000? Now, before we look at the answer, let us just understand the scenario. So, B limited, let us assume, is installing a machinery. But this machinery, he apparently seems to have purchased a second-hand plant for 1 lakh 80,000. Because it is a second-hand plant, he has spent 20,000 on repairing this plant. He will not be able to use this plant unless these repairs are incurred. The cost of this repairing is incurred. Therefore, this 20,000 becomes a part of the cost of the asset. So you have 180,000 which is the cost of the second hand plant that he has purchased. We have 20,000 which he has spent in repairs. I repeat, ordinarily after we purchase a machine, an asset and it is put to use, every year we will spend some money on trying to repair the machine. On That is nothing but a maintenance cost. Repairs and maintenance which are which are incurred every year on maintaining the asset is not a part of the cost of an asset. In this case, it is taken as a cost of an asset only because it is required to bring the asset in a condition that it can perform, that it can function, that we can use the asset. So, 180,000 plus the cost of incurring, repairing the plant, 20,000, Wages paid for installation. Without installation, we cannot use the plant. Next is fire insurance premium which is paid for the plant. Fire insurance premium is paid for maintaining the plant. If, if there is a fire and the, and the machine gets affected, gets destroyed, I want money, I want my machine replaced and therefore this cost is nothing but a cost incurred to maintain the machine. It is not a part of the cost of the machine. Therefore, totally 1 lakh 80 plus 20 plus 5, 2 lakh 5000 should be the cost of the asset. The answer should be C, 2 lakh 5000 cost of the asset. Let's now move on and understand a depreciable amount. What is the depreciable amount? Depreciable amount as we've discussed before is actually cost of the asset minus scrap value of the asset is a depreciable amount. Let us quickly go through this exercise. Following data pertaining to B limited is available. Cost of the second hand plant 180. Cost of repairing 20,000. Wages paid for installation of the plant 5,000. Fire insurance premium paid for the plant 1000. This exercise is exactly the same as before. In addition, we've got information that the residual value is 5000. The total depreciable amount would therefore be A, 1 lakh 80, B, 2 lakhs, C, 2 lakh 5000, and D, 2 lakh 6000.
from our discussion depreciable the total depreciable amount is nothing but the cost of the asset minus scrap value the cost of the asset was as we have discussed before 1 lakh 80 plus 20 plus 5000 1 lakh 80 being the cost of the machine cost of repairing the plant 20 the wages paid for installation of the plant 5000 we get 2 lakh 5000 that is the cost what is the scrap value scrap value is 5000 Therefore, what is the depreciable amount is nothing but cost minus scrap 2 lakh 5 minus 5000 equal to 2 lakh. Answer should be B. The depreciable amount would be 2 lakh. This total amount of 2 lakh will have to be spread over the estimated useful life of the asset. In, in a manner, in a suitable manner, in a systematic manner. That would be the measurement of depreciation each year. And it would depend upon the method of depreciation that we adopt.